Hello, um, I am Antonin Carret, and uh, so today I will talk about why sh you should take a look at Rust. Uh, so first of all, I want to thank all the FOSDEN volunteers for the awesome work they made. Uh, so thanks a lot, actually. Um, so okay, um, so let's begin. Uh, so as you might understand, I am a French guy, you know, the accent. And uh, previously, I tried to understand what the computer I trained to understand understood. Just a magnificent sentence to say, I gave up my PhD last week. And I really love uh, free and open source, and I am a contributor, actually, of many open source projects. So uh, for your information, um, I plan to open a Rust meetup and coffee meeting at Luxembourg, or near Luxembourg in France. So. Uh, Please share, share the information because since two months I tried to, um, to, to just import, it's not the correct word, uh, speakers and uh, people, etc. It's really hard for me. So if you can share actually the information or if you're interested, just uh, talk to me directly. Thanks. So um, today there is a lot of new programming language, um, like, for example, D, Neem, Go, Rust, etc. But uh, sometimes when we want to understand why a program language is really important, uh, we have to understand for what actually it, um, what is the goal of this programming language. So first, just a quick uh, story at the beginning, a need. And as you might know, since 2000 for consumer actually there are big changes. Uh, we switch actually from monocore to multi-core architectures for computers. Monostrade to multi-threaded applications, more powerful hardware, and democratization of the internet actually introduced a lot of new software, so many competition. And uh, those big changes actually for developers are really big troubles because we are, have to uh, switch from sequential code to multi-threaded and multi-core support applications that introduced uh, data race issues, big memory leaks problems, and uh, with this competition, uh, we have actually to build software with a lot of features that we don't actually test uh, a lot and uh, introduce actually those big problems. So this is a funny picture actually that relates um, the, um, yeah, the, 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 the idea of, you know, 2000. Uh, it's fr directly from the Mozilla office, and so this guy is not on a chair. Um, and there is a poster, must be this tall to write multi-threaded code. Uh, actually, it must be this tall to write safe multi-threaded code. And I invite you actually to take a look at this fabulous um, um, blog post just to introduce you a um, little bit more. Um, the Rust program language. So in this talk, I will be the most highest level as possible because we are all come from uh, different um, backgrounds. So I don't want to, you know, lose anyone in this talk. So I will try to to be the most highest level as possible. And uh, Graydon Hoare, so it's a um, Mozilla engineer at last in 2006 had this idea: we need a memory safety and race free multi threading programming language. Because this was really hard and it's still hard today to write safe multi threaded co uh, code with C and C if you want to obtain performance code. So, with this idea, Graydon Hall that said, yeah, yeah, we need a new C. And with this idea, he introduced a new programming language, the C. And this C is actually Rust. So, Rust, what is Rust? Rust is a modern, safe, fast, and, uh, yeah, and concurrent open source system programming language. So it's a programming language, actually, with the, the first goal is to write um, memory safe, thread safe, uh, with zero cost abstraction um, for system. Just a quick history. So, Graydon Hoare wrote the first Rust compiler in 2006 in OCaml, and I invite you to take a look at OCaml. It's a very uh, great programming language, and uh, it has been sponsored in 2009 by Mo the Mozilla Foundation. And in 2015, it reached the first uh, stable version. So now in 2018, uh, I think we are in 
1.23 or something like that uh, version. So um, in this talk, actually, I will um, present you why you should take a look at Rust uh, with different uh, layers. So first, I will introduce the core concept of Rust. Wh why actually Rust is so unique, unique uh, with this concept. We are all developers or in majority, so what, what developers want actually is productivity, productivity. And I will talk about the productivity in Rust. Open source is not only code, it's people. So I will talk about the community because the community, the Rust community is really awesome. Um, company is a project for uh, Rust in production. The to-do list of uh, 2018 and finally to conclude. So Rust has many features. And actually it can be great for developers to have many features but the learning curve is still high. So I will only introduce what make Rust so unique. It's memory uh, safety and yeah, data rest safety and zero cost abstraction. If you want to take a look at uh, all the features uh, of Rust, I just check the website, it's uh, clear enough for that. And just to explain those concepts, uh, I will yeah, I will introduce a shorter story. So once upon a time, the DVD seller and the customer. So just imagine the situation, you are a, a customer and you want to buy a DVD, okay? You want to buy what, actually, you want to buy this DVD, but if the box is empty, you cannot buy it. It's not legal and the DVD seller cannot actually uh, sell you the DVD. It's the same case actually for Rust. For memory safety, actually, we have no null pointer uh, dereference situation. So just imagine we have a struct with DVD with a title, and we have a function take that take actually uh, directly the struct. In the main function, we uh, actually reserve the memory. We allocated the memory for the DVD, and we want to take the DVD. But here, there is a compile time error, not at front time. It's on compile time use of possibly an initialized viable DVD. So the compiler will introduce you that, no, you cannot actually run this program because there is a no null dereference situation. Uh, there is a, sorry, null pointer dereference situation. In a other situation, so uh, the DVD is okay. So there, there is a box and the DVD inside. And in this case, the DVD seller is the owner of the DVD. If you want to buy this DVD, you want to be the owner of this DVD. So the DVD will belong to you, actually, and not to the DVD seller. And it's the same case, actually, for Rust. And we call that the ownership situation. So this is actually one of the main, this is the core, actually, of Rust. Um, we initialized a DVD, which is a struct, and uh, uh, actually the DVD is Blade Runner, uh, and we give it as argument to take the DVD here. So take is now the owner of the struct, of the DVD struct. So we can't use anymore in the main function here. And we have a compile time error that DVD is not belong to main, but to take. So as soon as take is not in the scope of the main, DVD is not, does not exist anymore. This is actually the the, the, the core feature of the Rust program language. It's the ownership situation. So in the third situation, you are not a DVD seller, but a DVD renter. You, you, actually, if you are a DVD renter, you just want to be the owner of the DVD, even if you borrow this DVD. So in this situation, oh, sorry. In this situation, you will give a period of time uh, just for the customer to um, use, actually, the DVD, okay? And this is really important because here you give the reference to the DVD, okay? So borrower will um, access to the DVD without any modifications. And after that, you can print the title of the struct because it still belongs to main. And just as borrower is not, um, 
is out of scope. It will, the Rust compiler actually will not um, um, remove actually the, the memory uh, for, for, for this struct. So it still belong, mainly still the owner of this struct. Okay? And return to us this DVD before the end of the first dem, introduce actually a period of time we call actually the lifetime of a reference. And it's typically a situation where you want to avoid uh, to reference uh, something, when you want to reference actually something that uh, there is no, sorry, um, that already be memory free actually, like dangling pointers. So with this situation actually Rust avoid that. So here it's immutable. And you can have the situation where you have actually mutable reference with a troll that, yeah, I couldn't, and sorry for that, I will give you a DVD copy. Unfortunately, it's a writable disk, so you can do anything with that. And unfortunately, put Bienvenue chez l'HT on the Blade Runner DVD. And this is mutable borrowing situation. So just to resume, using Rust, you can Attempt to dereference a null pointer. Attempt to use already freed memory, like dangling pointer. Forget to free memory and attempt to free already freed memory. And this is actually the core feature of Rust, is memory safety. But there are some rules actually to respect. The borrower scope must not must not outlast the owner. Just think about you know the situation of the period of time uh, the customer gets uh, the DVD. Borrow this DVD. You can have at least one reference to a resource. You can have one mutable reference to a resource, but you can't have the last two rules at the same time. And you must actually ask why. It's for thread safety. Because when does the data race happen? There is three, actually, uh, a, combination, a combination of three different points. At least two pointers to the same resource. At least one writing pointer and unsynchronized operations. But using actually the core feature, the ownership, if you have multiple reference, you don't have any writing pointer. If you have one writing pointer, you don't have any other reference. And all those operations are synchronized by default. So Rust answers this problem from the directly the ownership. So Rust actually, using Rust, you can't read and write the same variable from multiple threads at the same time. And you can forget to acquire a lock before accessing the variable it protects. And this is actually what um, Rust makes actually for, for, for memory and thread, thread, sorry, thread safety. Okay, so developers say, yeah, okay, features are, are good, abstraction is really great, and we need safety today. But we care about the override. But, and Rust ASEAN, so Rust ASEAN are just, you know, people that are using Rust, Rust maintainers, Rust developers, etc. They said, yeah, but with Rust, you only pay for the feature you actually use. Rust does not contain a garbage collector. The compiler actually will just adjust the lifetime of uh, the variables, the references, uh, just at compile time and perform safety check at compile time. So you obtain the, f the same performance, um, at least running time, than C++ but with safety. So for zero cost abstraction, you can combine low level control with high level programming concepts. And this is huge actually for a modern programming language. So this is uh, the core features of uh, Rust. So now as developer, we want to be productive. We don't want actually to write, uh, you know, safe program in six months and maybe, yeah, but we can do that actually in three weeks with Python, for example. And uh, so this is a tweet from Clément de Lafargue, uh, the CTO of Clever Cloud, that said, Rust up and Cargo is by far my favorite tool chain when it comes to build and deploy management. And using Rust, actually, the learning curve is high for Rust. Actually, it's the same thing for C++ if you want to learn C++. But you can be more productive um, using 
yeah, two different tools, REST app and Cargo. So first, Cargo is a built-in uh, package manager for REST. And it contains uh, actually awesome features, compile your program, check, um, init, run, run, unit, run your unit test, run your benchmark, publish uh, your library, install, or install crates, so crates, right, libraries, and by binaries you can find on the internet. And all of that in only one, only one configuration file. So you have a Tomel uh, file which contain actually, so yeah, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, you have different profile, profile, sorry. So you have the profile release with optimization level at free, no debug uh, mode. And um, for the panic, it accepts that your, your program with panic, etc. And you, you can have a different profile for your test, for your bench, for your doc, etc. Only one configuration file. And using Cargo, you just, for example, you, you, you can have the, a new uh, Rust uh, project and Cargo run, Cargo build, and yeah, it's okay. But sometimes actually we use, um, we are using different versions of the compiler. Where it comes, um, Rust up. So Rust up is an installer of Rust, and the, there are many objectives. Install Rust from the official release channels, uh, keep the compiler updated, making cross compiling simpler. Actually, Rust up and Cargo as the best productivity tool if you want actually to work in uh, a group on a given project. And um, just, yeah, ju just to talk about that, uh, we, reach, uh, we reached more than uh, 13,000 uh, Rust libraries in January and uh, nearly 300 million uh, downloaded libraries uh, in January. So, um, this is a picture I take from uh, the Rust Fest in 2017. Um, open source is not only code, and that's something we tend to forget. Open source, and free actually, free, free and open source, uh, it's community, it's people. And, uh, this is one actually, um, uh, I think uh, I, I like the most actually in Rust, is the community. The Rust compiler for now, it's 50 release, but it's uh, more than 2,000 contributors and more than uh, 70, 74,000 commits. And the community is really open to request for comments. So it's not a programming language, you know, that is sponsored by Mozilla, and Mozilla say, yeah, okay, uh, please, to, please to do that thing. Developers are, yeah, actually, maybe you, you can take a look at this, and developers and maintenance say, no, we will follow Mozilla. No, Rust is really open to the community, and um, each developer and uh, sponsor actually at the same place. There is no someone actually that is um, upon decisions than any other. There is a lot of uh, groups, meetups uh, in 35 countries. And if you stay in Europe, um, there is a Rust Fest, Rust Festival. Uh, and in 2018, it will be in Paris. So um, the community actually is, is really loving Rust. And we can take a look just at the developer survey from Stubborn Coverflow in 2015, so the first Stable version, Rust was the third most loved uh, in the statistics uh, programming language. In 2016, we were first, and in 2017, we were first again. Rust in production. So, um, is Rust is enough stable actually to uh, put some Rust on in production? And yes. There is a lot of uh, companies that are using Rust in production. Mozilla, OVH, uh, Clever Cloud, Dropbox, Tor, uh, Google, and PM, etc. There is more than 100 companies that are using Rust in production today. So you can take a look at this um, website. Uh, it just displays all, the, all the, the companies that are using Rust in production. But I just want to focus on awesome projects built in Rust. Servo, 
So um, uh, Savo is a web browser engine. Um, actually, it tend to be a prototype. And some parts of Firefox are directly like Stylo. Um, were, were experimental things on Savo be, be, before Firefox. There is Piston. Piston helps you actually to build uh, awesome games. Uh, Zai. Zai is a project uh, from a guy from Google, uh, tend to be a text editor. Um, Jezel, which is a ORM. Envy is my, actually, it's my favorite project. Redux, the Redux operating system. It's a full feature operating system written in Rust. It's not only a kernel, it's a full feature operating system. The project is, re is re really huge. It works very well. Uh, and yeah, if you, are, if you are looking for something that um, you know low level and um, you are interested in operating system, Redux is definitely one of uh, the projects you must be interested uh, the most. So, to-do list. Um, there's some cons actually today using Rust, and the first one actually is the learning curve. Rust introduced new concept, new programming concept, and uh, the advantage of that is that after Rust, actually, you are a better programmer because you, when you are um, uh, switching from C, C++, you say, yeah, okay, but I don't want to do that, or uh, you, you have better actually uh, uh, software, um, yeah, software management. And uh, Rust in 2018 will introduce uh, some new ways actually to reduce the learning curve, to learn Rust. Um, connect and empower Rust global community, and they will focus on web service, web assembly, CLI apps, and embed, uh, embedded, yeah, embedded, yeah, embedded devices. And I, I, I put actually, we care about your request because Rust 2018 uh, roadmap is actually a full list of what developers want the most actually in Rust and uh, in this year. So typically this request is for me a great message that yeah, the community is huge and we care about your request and we will, we will do actually what you want the most for this programming language. So, okay, uh, thank you. Sorry for the accent, sorry for my stress. Uh, I was very happy actually to, to, uh, to, to make this talk because uh, it's my first year in FOSDEM, it's my first talk, and uh, I'm really happy to talk about, uh, for me, one of the best programming language that uh, have ever been created since last, yeah, 10 years and for the uh, next 10 years. So if you want to take a look at Rust, and actually you should take a look at Rust, um, there is the Rust official website, the Rust book, RSC forum, and Slack if you want to, to talk a little more about this wonderful programming language. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so, um, um, Rust is a system programming language, but do people actually are using it for uh, applications like games and something like that? Yeah. Uh, so, definitely, yes. Um, there is some uh, current talk about I programming language, uh, I, I uh, level applications using Rust. Uh, this is definitely actually uh, one of the 2018 um, to do in the to do list, you know, in CLI apps. Uh, and there is Piston uh, for games, for example. There is something like that, but um, the, the, the Rust programming language actually has been developed actually for systems. And uh, you, you can just, if you take a look at the syntax, it's very similar to C, for example and uh, not very similar for, it's very verbose, actually, if you want to, 
to, to, to just to write uh, high-level uh, applications. So the community is working on that, just to reduce the syntax, for example, or, some, or uh, to let the compiler make something um, instead of, of you. If you're, um, it's definitely something that is happening, but for now, in my opinion, it's still a system programming language. But it's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.